Welcome to our Power to X session. In this episode, we are looking at why companies should consider the total cost of owning an electrolyzer. And uh, in this room, we are three people. From Danfoss, uh, I'm Helge van Jensen. I'm responsible for our Power to X uh, business. I'm based in Denmark. My name is uh, Otto Scherweim. I'm, I'm working for the Global uh, Product Management and Development Organization of Danfoss Drives and in my daily work I'm focusing on uh, Power to X applications. Yes, and my name is Andreas Schmidt, uh, working out of the CR region. I'm being in charge here of strategic business development and uh, Power to X is one of my favorites here. And why? Helge will explain. Here we would like to show you um, an overview of why we think electrolysis and power to x is a key element in electrification. And going forward, most of the energy that we will uh, we will see will be produced from renewable sources, primarily from wind and from solar. And everything we can electrify directly. Uh, let's say industrial processes and so, and also electric vehicles, uh, passenger cars, maybe also electric ferries, we, which we have already seen, should of course be electrified directly because that has the lowest possible uh, losses and the highest efficiency. But a lot of the energy, which we cannot uh, always store, can be converted from with the electrolysis from electricity to hydrogen. And the hydrogen can also help us to, to, for instance, extend the range of electric ferries by using fuel cells. We can also have trucks running on hydrogen, converting uh, hydrogen to electricity and, and fuel cells as, as well. But we still have a lot of these hard to abate areas where we need to, to convert the, the hydrogen into, um, into e-fuels and chemistry. And if we take the example of aircrafts, we, we will still need e-kerosene to run the aircraft, and this can be made by converting hydrogen into e-kerosene or converting hydrogen into methanol, which can power ships, for instance, or into e-ammonia, which is being used in the farming, farming or into e-diesel, which is powering vehicles as we know them today. So uh, why is this important, Andreas? Yeah, why is it important and why should companies consider the total cost of owning the electrolyzer? Because at the end of the day, of course, this energy carrier has got a cost. And it's something that we actually then have been willing to actually pay for this. But how do we arrive at this cost of levelized cost of hydrogen? There's a few elements into it. The first is the capital investment into the goods like we will actually be introduced to, the electrolyzer as such. Then the, we have the weighted average cost of capital is an interest rate and we have the lifetime of the equipment. If we look into the operational and maintenance costs, we can see mainly here the electricity cost as a driver for the cost and the maintenance cost is such. And this need to be divided uh, by the amount of energy that we actually producing or amount of hydrogen we are producing. And this has been driven out of the efficiency of the equipment and the operational hours. So yeah, why is that so important? Because the green hydrogen is, of course, competing against the gray and the blue hydrogen, and it has got actually a price point which is about twice or three times that of the blue and the, and the gray hydrogen. So the acceptance of the green hydrogen will only be there if it is at a price point where it is competitive. And this is actually what we need to aim here, because if it is at acceptable level, we will see actually a green hydrogen economy. This is really fueling the economy. But how can we how can we meet these price points? How can technology help us here? Otto, I think you have a solution here. I definitely have a proposal. Uh, and uh, here I'm, uh, I have just made an illustration of an electrolyzer plant. So inside the building there, you can see a lot of uh, red components and uh, you can actually buy all of these components from the Danfoss uh, components. Uh, the containers there on the right side consists of power converters. The main purpose here is to uh, make clean DC, nice DC, high quality DC for the electrolyzer. So uh, the electrolyzer is then again uh, producing hydrogen. 
technology we are using here is based on IGBTs, and uh, AFA means that active front end, so we're actively controlling these IGBTs. The main purpose here is to have a clean sinusoidal, nice uh, sinusoidal current that we're taking from a network. This means a low total harmonic distortion value. And so we are, uh, we are actually a grid friendly unit. We, we are trying to be nice to the grid so we can have a high, um, a good voltage quality, not only for ourselves, but also for the other units being connected to the network. This comes into the context of energy transition, electrification, and if the speculations are right, we will double or triple the amount of energy going through the electrical systems. So we need to be able to operate the systems in a smarter way. So a smart grid can be small grids, smart grids can be large grids, but it needs to be that we are all responsible when both when we are generating units and also when we are loads connected to, connected to the network. This comes into contact with uh, the TSO, transmission system operator, going to control or provide a stable network for the, one of the most critical infrastructure that we have, the electrical system. And Andreas, can you please take us to the next slide? What I'm trying to do here, I've been trying to categorize the different parameters attributes of the, of the product. The blue color here is uh, parameters that is affected of the operational expenses. Efficiency is important for the full lifetime. It is efficient important both for the DC quality, for the AC quality, and we already touched a bit on the grid connection. How this big load or the pilots we are seeing now are some tens of megawatts, the projections say that the electrolyzer loads can be several hundreds or even gigawatts. So they will be um, super important for the TSOs. These systems will be quite large. They, they will mean uh, there's a need of a good project management and uh, that we're able to supply the components uh, at a time when the customer is expecting them. So, and to make the system is, um, installation even more efficient, we are doing a uh, great code certification of the products before we are sending them to a customer. And we are also providing simulation models so that they can evaluate upfront how the grid converter is affecting or how they can see the load affecting in the, in the next, let's say, the, um, the, tra the transmission system of tomorrow. Almost needless to say, uptime and availability maintenance are super important parameters. Um, we are going to, we need to be ready when the day, when the sun is shining, when the wind is blowing, so we can take all, we can harvest the, um, the most of the energy uh, and we need to be ready for this when it happens. And I think you earlier made a nice comparison of how AFB behave or is compared to uh, SCR technology. Yeah, in this case, we have shown um, an illustration of a system with a, a traditional uh, uh, th thyristor SCR solution. And uh, of course, the energy comes from the grid. It goes uh, via a high voltage to media voltage transformer. And inside the plant itself, we have a number of electrolyzers, and each of them are fed by their own medium to low voltage transformer uh, and uh, the SCR thyristor rectifiers. And then uh, they are producing a DC, which is feeding the electrolyzer. Now, the output from such a rectifier is not a perfect DC. It has a certain uh, ripple, and the ripple is also affecting the performance of the uh, electrolyzer. There's been a number of studies showing uh, that, that the higher the ripple, the lower the efficiency of the electrolyzer is. On the grid side, on the AC side, uh, it's, it's also important what the harmonic footprint is, how much distortion we are bringing back to the grid. And uh, an SCR solution is actually producing quite a lot of, of harmonics, which needs to be dealt with. And also the power factor is not stable. It is uh, changing with a, the with a load. So in order to compensate for all that, uh, and we go talk about bigger systems in the many megawatts or range, you typically install a STATCOM system to take care of the power factor. And you typically also combine it with some active filtration to eliminate the, uh, the harmonics. And this is needed in order to be allowed to connect to the grid for such a, a large load. If we then compare to the Danfoss solution, pretty similar, but here we have replaced the, 
the, the, the SCR rectifier with a Danfoss active AC to DC grid converter using uh, the active front end technology. And the beauty that is that the DC output from this one uh, into the electrolyzer is an almost perfect DC. We have a really low ripple factor on the DC going in so that the electrolyzer can operate in the at the highest uh, possible efficiency point. On the load side, on the grid side, we have uh, a very, very low uh, harmonic distortion uh, on large units, uh, typically less than 3% THD. And also the power factor is uh, unity or it's even adjustable to the need. And that means we have no need for any statcoms or any additional devices. And this is definitely a saving, not only in terms of space, also in money, and we also eliminate some losses uh, this way. And also it makes it scalable. Now, if we look at the energy flow uh, from the traditional solution with the SCR and the Statcom, well, first of all, if we feed 100% uh, electric energy into the system, we have some losses in the Statcom, and this is probably around 1% average weighted loss. We also have some additional losses in the medium voltage to low voltage transformers and cables. And even if we have good quality components uh, with say 98% efficiency, we have probably around half percent additional losses due to the harmonics. The electrolyte or, or the rectifier itself only has a loss around 1%, uh, maybe a bit more if you also add the line chokes. But the biggest impact, that's actually the losses in the electrolyzer. And in this case, uh, if we feed it with a, a non-optimum DC quality, the losses would be around 27% uh, of the power going into the electrolyzer itself being converted to heat. And that gives an overall planned efficiency of 69.8% meaning that this is what is converted to hydrogen, the rest is lost as, as heat. If we then look at the Danfoss solution, we can see that the, the difference is that now we got rid of the Statcom, we don't need it anymore, so we saved some money and we also save some, uh, some uh, losses, so the efficiency is better. Now, the, the efficiency of the transformer is also better because we don't need to cope with the uh, with the harmonic current so the distortion is lower and we improve the the efficiency so we have reduced the losses to two percent now the losses in the converter are actually a bit higher so we went from say around one percent to to two percent uh, but the interesting thing is that we also improved the efficiency of the electrolyzer so here we went from 27 percent losses to uh, to 25 percent losses and by adding the efficiency numbers of all the elements together we have now reached a total planned efficiency of 72 percent instead of 69.8 percent and uh, you may say what uh, does two percent difference uh, make but i think it does make a difference and maybe you can take us through that uh, andreas yes and uh, we think it does make a difference uh, when we look into the calculation of the levelized cost of hydrogen, just give you an example of uh, that uh, we have here a case where we have certain uh, set a certain uh, financial parameters here or cost parameters that uh, allow the the cost to be at a level of 3.3 uh, .3, uh, US dollars. Um, we have two systems. We have the uh, the reference system with this uh, SCR solution, and then we have a system which makes some improvements or actually uh, we see some worsening effect uh, that we can actually play with to see what the effect is. We assume a markup of 10%, so because somebody is of course uh, reselling the hydrogen at the end of the day uh, for a certain markup, and so he has got a certain profitability, which in both cases is about 9% profitability. Now, Helge, you mentioned something around say 1.8%. Let's see what the effect is if we improve the efficiency from 1.8 percent, a mere 1.8 percent improvement. Actually, it results into a profitability of 9 versus 11 percent, which is in effect an improved profitability of 25 percent, which is, of course, significant. Yeah. So, yes, you can compensate also for some extra capital investment because the technology as such might be a bit more expensive. But in the end, 
by using a more expensive technology, you can lower the cost of the hydrogen. Isn't that great? I think that's perfect. So what are the lessons learned here, Helge? Well, the les lessons learned are also what we started talking about in the, on the first slide, that the companies really need to consider the total cost of owning an electrolyzer. This is what determines the costs, the levelized cost of, uh, of, uh, of produced hydrogen. And what you should con consider, that is uh, definitely the OPEX, because it has the highest impact on the, uh, on the economy. It's, of course, also the CAPEX, and very important, uh, which affects also the levelized cost of hydrogen, is the efficiency. And if we add all, all that up, what is the conclusion of that, Andreas? Yeah, uh, it's actually quite interesting because um, if we look into the future, then we can see a significant change towards the OPEX as the main contributors to the levelized cost of hydrogen. So as of today, uh, it's about 40% of the cost comes from the capital expansion and 60% of the operational expenses, while in the future, 85% are actually coming or arriving from the operational expenses. So I think it is something to consider for you who make maybe a choice of what technology to use, uh, because it may have a significant effect for you in the future on the cost level, which is again, of course, also a profitability, uh, say, um, a, say, a fact that you can generate here. So with this one, uh, we would like to conclude this session I hope you find it not only interesting, but you have been inspired what we have been talking about here. Please reach out to us. Uh, there will be a, um, a link to our website later on that you do find. Reach out to us, uh, get, engage with us. Uh, we are happy to say consult you. Uh, looking forward to this. For this uh, and for now, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.